This is uh, the latest video about the Blenkinsop Murray uh, Cog locomotive and here it is the revised version. Uh, if you've been watching the previous videos you'll know that I had to completely rebuild the model almost from scratch because I've just got so many things wrong in particular that I've made the boiler casing cylindrical in fact it's egg-shaped or elliptical and um, so now I've corrected that and here it is at last in trains thank goodness and so I'm just going to move into driver you see it's quite a diminutive little locomotive and I'm not making a tender because I understand and that's certainly the the uh, uh, look from the old illustrations the, the watercolor and line drawings of it pulling some wagons along uh, there, there was no tender and it was only um, designed or the usual journeys were only uh, one or two miles and uh, that was uh, they had held sufficient water and fuel uh, to operate it so let's just go into quick drive and into free roaming view and it's using an engine spec the same engine spec that I've used for the Trevithic locomotive and uh, well let's get it going so it's very very slow you can just see it beginning to turn there and up here it's actually doing no miles per hour so let's give it a little bit more welly and there's a few things I've still got to do I've got quite a few things still to do to this I've got to bring in the smoke which I haven't done yet I think these vertical rodding here needs a slightly different um, shade on the uh, colouring, on the texturing. But as you can see there it's going along quite nicely and it it's uh, normally operated up to about three miles an hour so it's on two miles an hour at the moment. Let's see if I can take it up a bit. And you'll notice down here I'm on half throttle as it were uh, because the engine spec will keep it down to quite a slow speed. And it looks rather odd with no smoke and there's going to be plenty. That's about the normal speed that it operated at apparently, about 3 miles an hour. So a brisk walk. And you can see there uh, I had to remodel everything including all the rodding all the animation has been redone and I've definitely got to have it covered in steam and the crew well apparently one of the crews stood about in the middle above the cogwheel or not above the cogwheel on the other side here and another one more towards the rear make sure it doesn't run out of track I'll run it backwards in a minute so I'm just going to bring it to an abrupt halt there we are and I'll run it backwards just to uh, illustrate the animation a little bit more now I haven't made any of these controls uh, active it's simply controlled as normal with the speed the track is still my original rack track and it's actually not too bad actually seems to be a little bit more in line with the track than before and that's probably because the first one that I did when I experimented it actually even seems to be fitting into the track rack that's very good news because the, the track is correct according to the diagrams of the time and the but obviously the cogwheel that I had was too small everything was about 25% too small and that was based upon one of these diagrams which I'd got off the net which actually gave a scale which was wrong uh, but Anthony um, who I've mentioned before has put me straight and has done a wonderful job in getting me <laughs> literally on the right track getting it uh, functioning properly uh, giving me all the some lovely photographs of his model uh, especially for this uh, business up the top here now on his of course these are movable you can actually operate the controls but on this this one I'm not going for operating controls this is as far as I'm prepared to go with the uh, model making 
I'm just having a look at those wheels a minute. It looks to me like they're... That looks okay. There, I think I've got a problem. Yes, on those wheels. They're inside out. So I need to reset the X forms on those. That's on. These are the carrying bogies. They're just. They seem to be just loose, loose wheels in their axle boxes. I'm just looking either side here. Yes, that's a strange effect. They've definitely got the width, but the depth is wrong there. You can see when we come in really close. That looks okay, but from there. It looks like there's, they're inside the a yard lengths of uh, cog track. So I must sort those out. And I must bring in plenty of smoke. And um, Arif in, um, in Spain has uh, put me right on the what smoke effects I should have. So this one, the main chimney here, will just be exhausting from the fire. But the... Um, the familiar sort of puff puff of a steam engine as the pistons act the two pistons there as you can see vertically mounted inside the boiler they will exhaust here so we'll have two exhausts this would be the one with the puff 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 coming out and I reckon I'm going to put um, quite a couple a couple of sort of errant s steam leaks somewhere up or steam points up near the cylinders there just to add to the atmosphere the whole thing and as I say one of the crew on one of the versions will stand here as long as I can fit him in without him I may stand back a bit actually looking at it and the other will stand back here now there's going to be four versions of this and although I'm a little bit unsure of it uh, I'm prepared to go with uh, the idea that they had uh, I'm just looking in there because I've got a problem there. See that cog wheel? Oh, just stops. So there's something not right with that, so that needs to be looked at. Yes, oh yes, I can see. Also, I now I know what that problem is. So I'm gonna have to fix that. The it's the cog bogey. At the moment I've got the cog wheel and all of this rodding animation um, operating as a single bogey but on at least on my version of trains you can see there's a distortion there there's a there's a really errant bit of nonsense there um, and underneath my goodness look at that that's awful uh, now that's not displaying it's, it's not because it's not there it's not displaying because the uh, the bogey itself is too large I found on my version of Tain or trains or whatever um, it isn't able to display all of the detail and it's all of the mesh so it just dumps it and we get a weird thing that's that's the signature of of, of a problem with the cog bogey okay so I can sort that as well but I thought you might like to see that finally I do have it running within um, within trains and not looking too bad and uh, so hopefully the next little video that I show you will be with all the bells and whistles well at least all the steam anyway I don't think there are any bells or whistles on it and nameplates four different nameplates um, and perhaps and the apparently that um, Arif was telling me emailed me to say that the wooden box on the top there with a the wooden extension was uh, as much uh, was to uh, protect the crew from the, the noise of the exhaust so it was a sound dampening device very crude rudimentary but try that out so that will be on one of the versions uh, also the idea that there might have been a side cab a, si uh, a sideways facing cab somewhere on the side of the loco I'm very reluctant to do that I don't think that's a, that's a variant that I would be too keen on experimenting with so it will just be a question of the four variants will have different names I'll change the coloring of the uh, wood texture and um, I think that will have to be it 
may, maybe move the crew around put one at each end something like that so we're still only doing two miles an hour here so let's crank it up a little bit and finish the video by doing operating at about walking speed as it accelerates up the sound is just a generic trains sound but as I said the engine spec was the one that I used for the two Trevithic locos, uh, the Penny Darren, there we are, that's up to three miles an hour now. And you can see we're at almost, well, we're about 60%. And that's the speed you should be operating at. It'll probably get up to five miles an hour, maybe even a bit further, but I'd be reluctant to run it any faster than that. And it simply ran forward and backwards. <clears throat> Got no idea, can't work out if there were any um, Yes, I'm looking there because there as well we're getting that same effect as I come round. I get the same effect there where it doesn't appear to be actually on the top of the rail, but it is. That's something to watch out for. And there we are. Salamanca. About 80% of the way there, I would say now. Very nice. Better stop it before it goes off the rails. Anyway, well. so if you have any questions, queries, or comments about the video, please uh, do post them. Give me a thumbs up. Do subscribe if you haven't already done so, and watch out for uh, Blenkinsop Murray Cog Loco version two video. What will it be? Video three. This is video two. Uh, and finally, on rails, in trains, and very nice too. I like these old locos. Perhaps do, uh, I'm going to have a look at the Headley locomotives next after this. Well, after this one, I'll do the true, have a look at the Trevithic ones, so upgrade them a bit if necessary, and at least sort them out a little bit, and then proceed with some of the other very old steam engines. <laughs>